Hey everybody, it's uh, Kevin here again. I uh, wanted to do a quick follow-up to the last tutorial and answer some of the questions that people have been having about, you know, actually draping a cloth onto something. So more, more than just weight maps, right? Actually having a cloth fall and interact and do something. The, the main problem that people were finding with weight maps is that they weren't actually um, dynamic and that it has to be generated at the start of a layer. And that's what the weight map is for the rest of the rest of the time you play it. Um, in order to actually drape something on, unfortunately, weight maps isn't going to work anymore for this case. So you start to have to look into something called collision effectors and object distance field effectors. And in particles, what happens is it causes particles to bounce off an object and interact with it. So similarly, we can use that to kind of control how this cloth hits an object and reacts to it. So um, I'm going to work off of, you know, a base that we had last time and go from there. So let's get started. So we're going to start with a basic scene setup here. Um, you're welcome to work off of what we had last time, or you can start fresh, whatever you prefer. I basically just have a couple of lights like last time and a shape that is ultimately our cloth. Um, just remember that, you know, you need quite a few subdivisions for this to work. So if I want to show you that real quick again, quite a few subdivisions there. So let's go ahead and make a cloth just like we did last time. And basically we'll start with adding the cloth effector. Well, first we need the deformer, the particle mesh deformer. So if you remember, um, the particle mesh deformer kind of creates particles for the vertices in your cloth. And then the cloth effector is what causes it to actually behave in a sort of fluid dynamic and holds it together. Um, we're going to add an SPH effector. That'll kind of be our gravity. So right off the bat, you should have this cloth that kind of goes crazy. The default cell size in your SPH is quite high. So we're going to drop that down a little bit. So now you should have a cloth that basically just falls. It, it kind of needs something to bounce off of, right? So oh, that's kind of cool. Let's make a box for this cloth to bounce off of. And we're just going to use the shape 3D node. So um, let's start with a box here. And it needs to be quite a bit smaller. Let's reduce that size a little bit. And in terms of this cloth, we're going to need this cloth to start a little higher than this box is, right? So let's raise this up a little bit. And you'll notice right now when you play it, the cloth just kind of falls through. There's, there's nothing telling the cloth to react to this geometry that we've added to our scene. So in order to do that, um, we'll need to add, similar to particles, something that tells this cloth that, you know, this geometry should create a reaction or should cause a collision. And what you want here is the collision effector. So if we go ahead and add that, you'll notice that still nothing happens. Um, the reason is that this collision effector needs an object node input so that you can tell it what object actually causes this reaction. So let's go ahead and feed this in. And now we're getting some type of collision. You'll notice it's a little crazy. Um, the reason for this is that we need to kind of go through and set the same smoothing and update rate stuff we did last time. So in our part particle mesh deformer, let's start by fixing our update rate and increase this number so that the simulation runs a little bit slower. Um, we'll also add some dampening here and we'll maybe drop our terminal velocity to say one. So nothing should move faster than one. Um, already it's a little bit better. You'll notice that this cloth right now is kind of falling forever. And so we basically have to go back into our cloth effector and increase the stiffness, right? You know, let's go for 50 for now and we'll increase our average edge length a little bit. This just gives the cloth a little bit of stretch. And I find it's a little helpful. And when, when you're trying to use dynamics and have collisions, just to have the cloth stretch a little bit when it hits. And, you know, you'll notice you're already starting to see some of the cloth dynamics. Obviously there's a lot going on here. We need to do some work to smooth that out. Um, so let's go through and do a little bit of that. So right now, um, one of the issues is that although our simulation runs at a pretty decent speed, I think that 
for cloth simulations, you need this fixed update frame rate to be even higher. And it'll, it'll kind of feel like your cloth is running in slow-mo, but it should help your accuracy a little bit in terms of how the simulation calculates. So you'll notice already you're getting like this more watery fluid feel to the cloth here. So, you know, down here we're getting quite a bit closer, but you'll notice there's a lot of noise happening here. And so, you know, let's look at why that is. Um, by default in your collision effector, you have a collision velocity scale. You can think of this as how far, how fast particles bounce off from a collision. And because they're bouncing right now, when this cloth hits your cube, it's telling all these points in your cloth to jump up and down in a sense because there's an actual velocity attributed after this collision happens. So let's zero this out. We don't actually want any sort of jumping for now. And there's also a point collision radius. This is kind of like a little bit of what you could think of as a safety margin or a buffer zone for your particle to, to, to have a collision event happen before it actually touches the surface here. So if we play it again without any collision velocity scale, you'll notice that we've already reduced the noise quite a bit here. And obviously there's some stuff we still need to work out here. Um, so let's also drop our point collision radius. And this is really bare bones. We're kind of just going for hit, to, to have the cloth hit this cube and then kind of do nothing, right? And just hover there. So you'll notice we've cut back on the noise quite a bit already. And similar to last time, we should also, you know, smooth this cloth out a little bit. And I think that will help substantially. So same thing as before, smoothing deformer. And let's go ahead and increase the iterations here right off the bat to say 10. So if we play this again, we should already start to see kind of a collision occur, right? This is already looking much better. And the smooth, you can see the smoothing deformer did quite a bit. But you'll notice like the cloth is kind of falling through our cube a little bit. It, it almost needs, you know, either you could go back here and add a little bit of point collision radius and try to improve that a little bit. Um, you always have to balance that because if this number gets too high, what your cloth looks like it's hitting will actually feel bigger than the object below it. Um, you know, so one technique that I found was quite helpful is this object distance field effector. So you can actually use either one of these or both in unison. I've had probably the best luck using both of them together. Um, the object distance field effector is, you know, exactly what it sounds like. It, it, it has an effect based on some distance away from this object. By default, this is set to repel. So if you drop down this dialog, you have a couple other options. And the one that we want to look at is collision here. So when you select collision and we connect this, it's the same thing as your collision effector. This also needs to be told what object um, to create a reaction to. So let's also feed this cube into the object distance field. So we have two inputs now, one that goes into the collision and one that goes into this object distance field effector. And if we play this again, your object distance field effector, you know, it's not super visible in what it does, but it basically helps keep your cloth from falling through the cube as much um, you know, it'll still poke through every now and then. And already you're probably starting to see some of the limitations of doing collision effectors and object distance field effectors. They're just not super accurate methods. And it's, you know, you kind of have to tailor your expectations as you go into this. Class simulation real time is still, I would say, a fairly difficult ask. And so you're going to see a little bit of this artifact and you kind of have to find small fixes or, you know, increase your smoothing, maybe fiddle with the values in here to get it to look a little better and a little bit smoother. So, you know, some of the things we can do is surface distance target, just like in collision effector, the point collision radius. Um, this is also something where it gives you a little bit of a buffer between the actual surface of your object below and how you want this thing to behave. So it creates a little extra bit of a gap to make sure your cloth doesn't fall through your object. So if you increase that a little bit, you'll notice that you got this kind of funny ripple going on. And the reason is, is your object distance field effector also has a collision velocity scale. So we're going to want to zero that out as well for now. And you can always play with these values and have a cloth that, you know, sort of bounces off your cube or does other reactions that you might be looking for. And already here you can see we're starting to approach what feels like a pretty good cloth simulation of this cloth falling and draping onto an object. 
And you'll see using the both of these together, we're actually getting a decent result. You know, there's a few dimples and imperfections, things like that. But overall, this looks pretty good. So if we, you know, try just one of these at a time, we can get a better idea of what each component kind of helps do. It's hard to explain precisely. Um, I think it's easier if you just play with this and turn one off, you know, visually see what happens. So same as before, let's try just the object distance field effector. And you'll see that that one on its own actually does a pretty good job. So depending on how you want to structure your scene, you could easily use one or the other, or you could use both. Um, I'm going to, that actually looks pretty good. I'll leave it with just the object distance field effector for now. Um, one thing that I found was kind of interesting is the way that this cloth kind of furls here, like a tablecloth, you actually have some control of that and counter like you would think that it's the stiffness in your cloth effector, but actually I've had better luck playing with your SPH effector. If you tune your cell size here, you'll see that it actually has an effect on sort of how bendy or flexible this cloth is. And then it has an effect on how large these furrows become. So the larger you make your cell size, the larger these furrows get. And it's something that you could probably play with to get a cloth that feels a little bit stiffer, you know, less like cloth and a little more like a uh, leather or something like that. If you go to really large values, you're going to get some crazy behavior there. You know, it might not feel as natural anymore. So if we make this valley really small, you're going to get these really fine ridges and what almost feels like water. And as you increase this a little bit more, you're going to see a little bit more of this like um, stiffer cloth behavior. So you feel free to play with that. You might find some interesting results um, fiddling with some of the parameters in your SBH effector here. This looks pretty good. Um, one more tip that I found on accident kind of is this ambient occlusion. You know, one thing that will help make this look more realistic is shading in between your furrows here a little bit. So if we attach this right off the bat, you'll see it's added some shadows in here and um, you can play with this blur size here to change how fine this grain sort of looks. And you can also increase your sample count if you want a higher amount of accuracy. So if we zoom in here a little bit and toggle this node on and off, you'll notice, you know, adding this little bit of ambient occlusion in between your furrows actually helps this cloth look quite a bit more realistic. So now I would say our simulation isn't bad. You'll notice it's starting to fall through your cube. You know, the longer you let this run, the more errors you're going to accumulate and it's slowly going to look in a sense wrong. So again, just tailor your expectations for what you want to get out of this notch cloth dynamics and know that, you know, by slowing the simulation down and increasing your fixed update frame rate, you can get more accurate results, but it'll feel less real time and more slow motion. So you'll notice as I doubled the update frame rate, the simulation is going to run even slower, but in some senses, I feel like the motion in these areas will feel more accurate. Basically, it has more iterations per running cycle to calculate what's supposed to happen and give you some feedback here. And if you want to, you know, smooth some of these out, you can always increase your smoothing iterations even further. So there you go. This looks pretty good. And this is where you can start to have some fun because this scene is dynamic, right? This is still reacting to things we can, you know, play with how you move the shape kind of like a rigid body. And so if I were to take the shape and just put in a math modifier to move it on the Y axis up and down, right? This is just a sine wave. So this cube should start bouncing up and down. Um, it's a little fast. So if we slow this down a little bit to something like this and maybe reduce the scale a little maybe to like here. So if we restart the simulation, you'll notice that it's actually starting to have a dynamic effect on your cloth. And this is, this starts to get really fun. Like if you saw my cloth simulation demo, you can do things like rotate this cube, you know, instead of moving in the Y, you can also move in the X, things like that. And then you can get some really crazy reactions out of this cloth because it's actually reacting to dynamic objects. So similarly, right, we can replace this cube with say a sphere. 
um, let's reduce this radius a little bit. And you'll see, you know, this cloth is actually reacting to whatever your shape here is. I've also seen people try um, unique mesh shapes beyond just primitives, so like say a logo or some other icon that you enjoy working with. And depending on how you play with this SPH effector, like I showed you earlier, you can get some really interesting results in how this cloth behaves. So using what I showed you last time and this time, um, you should have a pretty good handle now of doing basic cloth simulation. And you should be able to have quite a bit of fun with this. You can even mix, you know, generated weight maps with some of the dynamic stuff here. So you could have a flag where an object now hits the flag, but one end of it is always pinned down in a clean manner. Um, so, you know, let your imagination go wild. I hope this has been helpful. Let me know uh, what you guys want to see next. And if you have any questions, you know, I'll try my best to answer them. Just remember to uh, keep your expectations realistic for what you want to get out of cloth. And can't wait to see all the cool things that you guys end up making. So until next time, take care now.